The trials continue. Lawsuits around Ripple do not subside. Lawsuits come from all sides, and it is unknown when it will end. Do you think Ripple will be able to fend off all attacks? What will be the outcome of the courts? We will answer all these questions in today's video. Investors who contend that XRP is a security filed a class action lawsuit against Ripple four years ago, and it is ready to proceed. On Wednesday, the parties in the Zakhanov v. Ripple action will be heard in a hearing in a California federal court. According to Crypto Law, a regulatory news website for digital assets, which supplied the update, only 500 members of the public should be permitted online access to the proceedings, according to the website. In accordance with the statement, the hearing is for oral arguments on the question of certifying the class of XRP holders suing Ripple. Vladi Zakinov, a plaintiff, and two other people filed a lawsuit in 2019 against Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse, the company's CEO via investor Bradley Sostak, the primary plaintiff in the aggregated complaint. Vladi Zakinov sued the defendants in January 2018 after incurring a sizable loss from the sale of Exerp, alleging that Exerp is an unregistered securities. Additionally, the plaintiff attempted to convert the dispute into a class action lawsuit that would typically include all individuals or organizations who bought Exerp. The defendants argued, however, that XRP is not a security and asked the court to reject the claim. According to Crypto Law's notice, the hearing today will include oral arguments on the issue of certifying the class of Exerp holders who are suing Ripple. The plaintiff, Bradley Sostak, who owned XRP for two weeks, is asking to be lead plaintiff in the class and is asking to represent all XRP holders who either owned it and sold it at a loss or own it today, according to a statement from Crypto Law. While his request has not yet received a decision, John Deaton, who had earlier submitted an amicus brief on behalf of 75 these XRP investors in the dispute, said he expects to monitor the proceedings. However, the public is still interested in the outcome of the company's concurrent legal dispute with the SEC while Ripple fights the issue out in court. Now that the majority of the briefs have been completed, it is anticipated that Judge Annalisa Torres will issue a summary judgment shortly. Investors are increasingly faced with choices between selling their interests and waiting for the outcome as a result of the continuing legal disputes. Nevertheless, most analysts feel that Ripple might succeed, assisting XRP to break new ground. Given the SEC's apparent assault on the cryptocurrency industry, despite the absence of adequate laws, the court battle between Ripple and the SEC has been going on for two years and 120 days, and it is still unclear when the judgment will be handed out. There are a number of legal professionals who are of the opinion that a judgment is close at hand. Nevertheless, it is unknown when the judge will make their decision public. Because of this issue, there is a great deal of pressure being placed on Judge Analyosa Torres. The case has caused significant rifts to form between the SEC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, except to carry Congress, and the cryptocurrency sector. The attorney representing the XRP community, John E. Deaton, has increased the stakes in the court battle between Ripple and the SEC by claiming that this is the most important no-fraud SEC enforcement action since 1946. The lawsuit is now ongoing. Given the gravity of the situation, the judge is taking her time with the decision and giving serious consideration to each and every remark. As was pointed out by him, if the verdict goes against Ripple, Judge Torres is aware that she is dealing with a conservative court. And if the finding goes in favor of Ripple, she will be required to defend it to everyone. If the ruling goes in favor of Ripple, however, she will not be required to do so. The lawyers John Deaton and James K. Phelan have hypothesized on the basis of prior decisions made by Judge Torres that a judgment may come as early as the beginning of April and as late as the end of the month. Ashley Prosper, a member of the XARP community, 
has also forecasted that this week would be eventful. She based her prediction on Judge Torres' judgment on the Daubert petitions, which took 52 days to determine. Judge Torres is under a great deal of pressure as a result of the Ripple v. Sec court case because of the importance of the issue for international commerce and banking. It is not certain when precisely the judgment will be released. Nevertheless, it is anticipated that it will be forthcoming in the near future. Ripple and the SEC both have more to lose as a result of this lawsuit, and the cryptocurrency market is waiting with bated breath for the decision. Will Ripple depart the United States as Coinbase did in favor of a country with more lenient cryptocurrency regulations? Last week, Coinbase, the biggest cryptocurrency exchange in the United States, grabbed headlines when it said it had obtained a license to operate in Bermuda and would soon be launching an offshore exchange. Meanwhile, Ripple's legal fight with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, continues with a verdict reportedly imminent. Ripple has already stated its willingness to battle and is likely to appeal all the way to the Supreme Court, although a ruling might take years to come down. In addition, in July 2022, CO Brad Garlinghouse threatened to relocate the crypto corporation if it was unsuccessful in its legal fight with the SECI. If we don't win here in the U.S., we'll take our business somewhere. We still have a huge company to establish. If the local regulatory environment isn't going to be helpful to us, then why bother? Some indicators have emerged over the last few weeks suggesting that Ripple is actively growing its footprint in other nations and exploring their potential advantages. In recent interviews, Garlinghouse and other Ripple executives have regularly gushed about the positive regulatory and business climates in various nations. Ripple's top lawyer, Stuart Alderodi, said last week that he was in the United Kingdom on the day of the Gensler testimony before Congress. I was not around yesterday to see the uproar at the Gensler hearing. I am now in London, where I am working with my team to expand our firm. I'm afraid I have no words to describe how incompetent the sex seems from across the water. Ripple's International Policy Council Susan Friedman has spoken highly of the game, changing development prompted by Europe's MICA crypto legislation in recent weeks. It's not a lack of compliance, she said, but rather a lack of understanding that's plagued the United States in recent weeks. XARP community member Anders L. has also discovered other indicators of Ripple abandoning the U.S. on the official website. She adds in her most recent tweet, Ripple currently has 66 available roles, 46 of which are located in countries other than the USA. Six of the available American jobs are unpaid internships. Additionally, he realized, Nonetheless, the local finds the remark peculiar. Following the conclusion of the dispute, Bank of America, BOA, aims to strengthen its cooperation with Ripple, as reported by Bitcoinist. It's improbable that Bank of America would bail out now, so close to the finish line. So then, what's the use? There has been no formal word about Ripple leaving the United States. But the company does seem to be paying more attention to the rest of the globe. This is not shocking, but it could be simple for Ripple to carry out its threat. A girl was ripped in half by a shark in front of her friends.